Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. I don't know what happened yesterday, but why did I assume there were two games when there are four in the final? It's something even beyond me. So game three started and finished. And I think <laughs> I don't really want to do this because up to move 15, the exact same moves were repeated from game one. So where is the joy for the spectators? However, having said this, this is what I'm prepared to do. And I'm doing this for those who might have trouble following what is going on. I will cover this game, but before you watch it, if you haven't watched game one on this channel, just watch it. I will cut to the chase and start in fact any analysis from move 15. And the other reason I'm doing this is to just speed things up. So Timo White goes for another marshal. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop back, knight f6, castles, bishop e7, going for the close Spanish, rook e1, b5, Bishop back again, castles, c3, d5, takes, takes. And when e5, and the knights came off. c6, d3, the rook comes under fire, rook back to the first, bishop f5, just like in the other game. Queen f3 which was also repeated in the other game. And rather than get the bishop out the way, Dean came up with this response. So we have an instant mate if the bishop on f5 is removed. g3, queen h3, and Timur goes for a different move here. In game one, there was knight d2, rook e8, and knight e4. In this game, any ideas what the difference is? This is what Timur did. To try and entice black to take, and he does. This is what he did. And now, when the knight made his way into the game, black cannot attack the queen. And here, we have an entirely different type of game. Queen back to f5. To try and get the queens to come off led to this and when the rook repositioned here what is Liren up to let's wait and see a4 something similar to the other game and there was action on the other side of the board this is how Ding Liren replied and he's just waiting for Timur to come up with something this something was this Rook c8, and this makes so much sense. Centralizing pieces is one thing. Getting ready to go after this bishop on d4 is not just possible. If we put the rook back and go for c5, there is a little trick, and this is why black can't play it. And this is very simple here. The queens come off, and this knight is yours. And if you want to take this bishop, this is how you lose your rook. So c5 is too early, but the rook move does get ready for something like c5. But here the queens did come off. And when the knight jumped here, the bishop moved to safety. And now the knight jumped further. There are some tricks White can use now. Ding Liren has not lost a single game in Russia. And boy, he showed us how solid he can be. And he was solid in nearly every single game. And surprisingly, he seems to play better with the black pieces. If Ding wins this game today, there is 
no need to play game four. And if anything, this is his biggest test to date. Not just for Ding Liren, but Timo too. A win today, and he's back into the race. Can he do it? And if so, how? In a few moves, the end game will be in progress. And though the queens are gone, which makes it easier to draw, there are plenty of pieces on the board to even win. And what if a player blunders? Even the best engines in the world blundered, and not just once, but repeatedly. And we're talking about the recent super final games between Stockfish and Ali. Knight back and rookie five. And this is such a deep response by Timor. G6 to cover, and here is where it starts. First, these two pawns came off. Timor came up with an excellent tactic. Any ideas what he did? And the clue is in this bishop here on b3. Anyone wants to have a go at this one before we reveal? This is the move. And once Ding Liren sat on this for some nearly four minutes, he had to go for something. Let's examine first this one. What if the rook moves into e8? After the bishop comes off, capture the rook, and when the bishop also comes off, whether you capture with the king or rook, this knight on b4 also disappears. And this is basically over. If we come back, if you remove the knight with the pawn, there is this nifty rook takes on f5. And when the rook is captured, what do you think of this one? And again, it's game over in a few moves. In the end, and when Niren calculated his various options and did this under four minutes, the knight was removed with the bishop. And when the rook arrested him, we saw this unfold. And after the king moved out, bishop takes and rook takes. And once the knight additionally went to the bench, this is how Ding responded. And whatever you do here, at least a pawn will come off. So what we have is one, two, three, four, five white pawns, V one, two, three, four black ones with the bishop hanging and this guy in A6. Once you figure how this one works out, well, you may easily get a draw out of this end game. Bishop F6 was an extremely precise response because if you get greedy and remove this guy with the rook, when A6 vanishes, this is how black loses the game. Rook E4, and I don't have to continue, but this one pawn difference should be enough to drive you home. Coming back to where we left it at, Ding saw this variation. So what he did was to go for option number two for us and option number one for him. He challenged the bishop and not takes, but this is how Timo played it. And what this move does, it protects b4. Rook back to save a6. Got this rook move in. And in short, what has everything very well covered. And by retaining an extra pawn, his position is far better than Black's. And this is provided both players play a perfect game. King back, and bishop back to c5. And there are no more checks on c1. There is no infiltration on c2. And there is, I beg your pardon, there are no takings anywhere. King f7. King g2 and king e6. And these kings are so powerful, both of them. b3 to free up this rook. 
got H5 up and running. And this looks to be going White's way, all the way. He still needs to prove the extra pawn can make all the difference. King f3, king f5, and rook d2. And there will be a battle in the center and who can control it first. So this is not about pawns because there are hardly any of them in the center. We should be five. And having come in with this pin, It's all about the next move. When the king attacked the rook, can you see how it unfolds here? Even with these double pawns on the queen side, they are so damn powerful. When the king climbed up and into this spot, this bishop had to go somewhere. And when Dingley Ren pulled him here, any ideas how you do it? F4. And when the bishop repositioned again, f5, and things begin to clear up. King back, and this check, and white rules the board. Ding knows he could have gone home today with a win, but this is easier said than done. But he's the one who needs to win this game. Right now, he's losing, and Timo is fighting like a lion. Where does he pick up all that energy after yesterday's defeat? King to the back rank, and there is one move in particular, which is, in one word, crushing. Does anyone want to guesstimate it? Bishop d6, and this is only possible because of this pawn on b3, that is so powerful. When Ding traded the pawn on g6, H5 will come off soon, but Timur may not even want him. Bishop back, King G5, and what now? Timur will remove this pawn, and with two passes and no way to protect H5, Ding Liren gives it up for the very first time in this tournament. The Marshal has been played so many times to mention, and yet, he would deploy it again, just like he did in game one. He didn't get a better position out of it. But as things moved into the end game, only then things began to take shape. What you see on the board is hopeless for black. H5 comes off and these two pawns will walk all the way until at least one of them queens. If you can beat Din Liren, you can also win this tournament. It all hangs in the next few days. A draw tomorrow would get them to move to faster time controls, but who ever expected today? Timor was the one to have won a game that looks so equal in so many different ways. So the next game is tomorrow, and we know if we have a win, the person who wins it also walks away with another title under his belt. I'm not sure what to expect, but I don't think anyone would take a risk. And this is probably something many people want to see. See you all tomorrow, guys. Until then, this is your chess puzzler.